I don't know if I have anything clever to say. I think I'm all out of cleverness today. It's kind of sad, yes. really. Uh, I think we all have a maximum amount of cleverness per day. Well, I've reached my limit. So on that note... That's right, welcome to the Standard Popper Show. It's me, Brennan, your lovable host. Along with me, as always, is Sam. Say hello, Sam. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great week before the holidays. Or for some of our nice people, Hanukkah started tonight, so yep. enjoy that. The uh, first night of lighting the menorah is tonight. It sure is. I hope everybody got a lovely pin set. <laughs> Or maybe a nice dreidel. Yeah. And there'll be no betting on dreidel spins on this show. Well. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Fancy for dreidel? Come on. (laughs) All right, let's get started. SPDC happened on Sunday. Hence the name, Sunday Popper Deck Challenge. Ten players, ten reported. Yay. Yay. Three round Swiss. Top four playoff. I don't see somebody I usually see in the top four. Dr. Baker was not in the top four. No, and the top two were two relative unknowns. Yeah, I don't know who American Garen or Taser Taser the Dog. The Dog. I'm not... um, Ran into either of those nice gentlemen playing Sandra Popper, so that's pretty cool. Me either. Well, it was a <laughs> it's kind of a blast from the past. We have Azorius, Is it Simic, and Mono Red. <laughs> so let's take a look at the winner. Blue White Heroes. <clears throat> it is an aggro build. You got your creatures, mostly heroics. You have the Worldwind Adept, who is not, and the Warwing Siren. Oh, Warwing Siren is. Yeah, the Just Guy student and the whirlwind yep. for the prowess dudes. So. Prowess. prowess. Prowess goes hand in hand with the ye old heroic. So that's pretty cool. Spells Aqua's form for a little evasion. Chosen by Heliod. Draws a card. God's willing. Protection. Feet of resistance. More protection. Fleet feather sandals. I did not think I would see it in a deck. But there it is, folks. It's surprisingly a resilient way to give a creature haste and flying. Um, yeah, once it's down, only two mana? Yeah. I kind of like it. <laughs> I, actually, I've seen it in a few heroic decks because late game, when you have like a 3-4 band trailblazer in play, it's got a big old butt, and now it's flying. So, yeah. It's hard to get rid of. It is, definitely. Sideboard tech a lot of tricks and then you have the rise of eagles which i would think would be kind of for the um, match up against that tokens deck kind of uh, fight fire with fire and then you have and mm-hmm. the void snares like typically they play balance mm-hmm. so it's kind of odd um to see that in the sideboard but there's probably a good reason behind it um the one-off impre- oppressive raise is kind of a, a neat idea. So yeah, if you can stop early aggro with that, it's kind of nice. Yeah, especially, it's not bad, especially since mono red heroic is like crazy good. So right, and another thing, if you, I think if you put it on a prowess, it really affects them kind of hard because first of all, for them to trigger a prowess, they're gonna have to spend mana, and then to attack, gonna have to spend more mana. And those prowess guys, for the most part, aren't super terrific out of the box. Uh, no. But, um, hey, he clearly got it to work. Yeah, four and one. Not so bad. Not bad not at all. Not bad at all. So. Let's take a look at an opening hand. Planes. Planes. Ugh. Wow. More planes. That's unfortunate. Feet of Resistance. It's a good card, but what are we going to put it on? Chosen by Heliod. Not that. Yeah, can't put it on that. We can put it on a Jeskai student. And look at that. Okay. This presents 
something kind of interesting because you're given a lot of choices here. If you pitched your first seven and came back with planes, 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 feet, chosen, Jess guy, would you keep it? I would keep it. Yep, me too. So I figure with the whirlwind, it's going to sit in your hand for a while. But once you get it to stick, um, you're you're going to be doing well for yourself. I mean, you've got your end game in your hand, mm-hmm. and you have a pretty decent early game just with the cards that you've already drawn. You're drawing an extra card off the chosen, so I mean, mm-hmm. I think you keep it. Yeah, I'm keeping. It'll be might be a little tight, but I'm keeping. Let's see what we get. Oh, let's look at the curve first. Again, more of a tower, but you have your late game whirlwind adepts out here at the five, which I don't think is bad. I I kind of like it. I mean, the only I think better. the only card that's kind of an odd man out is the um, morrowing sirens. Yeah, they are heroic, right? But I mean, they're not. It seems like they're not quite as good as the wing seed riders, right? Um, and he's cut he cut one wing seed to include one of the war wings. So true, but, I mean, but they're the thing, a little easier to cast. Yeah, it's because it's one, it's two and a blue, as yeah. opposed to one white white. So, so it's not a very yeah. blue heavy deck. No, it isn't. But I thought he had a, a decent representation in the lands. Oh yeah, no, um, definitely. Um, making sure that he hits blue going into the every aspect of the game. So right. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next six. Tranquil Cove. Excellent. Little, yep, it's some uh, life to help you against some early aggro. And then just like we were talking about, Warwing Siren. I think with the protection though that we already had in hand. I'm. I don't. I don't think this is a bad thing to have, because we have Tranquil Cove, right? Which gives us our blue. We already had three mana in hand, right? So, who knows? Would we have rather had a Wing Steed? Maybe. But I'm. I'm interested to see how War Wing pans out. Ooh, more more land. Could could you do with a little less? There's those Fleet Feather Sandals we talked about. But flying in haste seems really handy. Especially if you get um, the uh, whirlwind adept out and you want to just you know break on through. I mean, even this dropping him on a Jeskai student um, is not a bad thing. I mean, well, quite often be, you're able to deal this huge amounts of damage with the student off of the prowess. So. Yeah, I say prowess triggers off of this, doesn't it? Because it's non-creature. Uh, yeah, when you first cast when it. When you first cast it. Yeah. Right. So there is something there. Oh, and there's the direct competition for the Warwing Siren. That is interesting. I mean, they, both, they both have their strong points. Maybe the Siren is in there because the 1-3 is relevant mm-hmm. um, against a lot of different decks. Um, so, I mean, but I mean, I, I would keep this. I would be happy to play out the Siren um, or the Wingsteed. I probably would go Siren first. Now that's tricky because the Wingsteed always draws removal. So yeah, yeah true. I, I guess it just really depends on, depends on the deck I'm playing against. Really, <laughs> so I think you'll know better after sideboard. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that bad boy. Aqua form. form. So very, you get some, very handy. Very like card filtering and mm-hmm. yeah. Um, having ran into a single skink um, in my top eight match, um, <laughs> Scry one yeah. way more powerful than people give it credit for. I think it is really impressive over and over and over again. So yeah, yeah no, that's a bad. good. I think that's a good um, top off off of the deck. So yeah, I agree. All right. Speaking of your top eight, Matt, Sam was in the top eight. Why don't you tell us yeah. about what happened? So I played Grixis Control. Um, I thought, okay, surely there is room in this format for a control deck. 
And I was incorrect. I was about to say, and what did you find out? <laughs> um, I found that aggro is king and standard popper. Um, right now, if you're not playing aggro, you're probably losing. Um, unlike my round four matchup that lasted a total of three minutes, <laughs> at least I made a game out of it. In the second, in the first game, I just got crushed. Mm -hmm. Second game, I played two lightning strikes, two magma sprays, one scouring sands, and I nullified two things. Yeah. And he still completely crushed me playing Mono Red Heroic. That, and that sucks. <laughs> that deck is just... He even killed... I had two, uh, two Scryfish in play, and he killed both of them. Like, he just dominated that match. And so, yeah, I think you have to go aggro or go home <laughs> in the format right now because there's just not anything that can stop Mono Red control and it's so weird because at this time last year like we were all like oh demiri mill when will aggro ever be able to come back well <laughs> it's back we got what we wished for hey mm -hmm. um not to take too big of a break did you got did you did everybody see the new fate reforged card oh the uh it's the uncommon yeah it's an uncommon so it doesn't really fit the format right but it's the one in a white and you get to choose to either give something indestructible or Smite the Monstrous? Yeah, destroy a creature for a greater power, I think it was. Oh, it's Toughness. So, What's that? Oh, uh, here, let me double check. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, one of, it's one of the two of them, of course. It's not <laughs> letters in the first name. We're not playing on glued folks. Come on. I, I, okay, one thing. I'm going to take a little... While you're doing that, I want to yeah. bring up a subject with the good folks who are listening to this. What's the deal with people wanting unsets? It seems like such a colossal waste of time. People like fun. Remember, the game is supposed to be about fun. Yeah, okay, that that that's fine. But you're you're going to invest money into an unset for I don't know. Let's say you draft it ten times. It just seems like I don't know. I mean, I understood. I, I feel the like I think. Yeah, conspiracy, but that that goes like that, you can that that expands expands all formats though. Conspiracy right. is its own thing, and that was its own little fun stuff. But all the cards in there that you spent money on go out towards many, many, many other decks and formats. But unsets do nothing. I mean, I guess maybe if you are just really in love with full art lands. <laughs> the Some unsets were are great. I don't know. Yeah, no, I never. I mean, I think I missed the first one completely, and I saw people playing with the second one. Yeah, and I, I just, I don't. I'm not that type of player. I kind of just want to play with decent cards and fun formats. So. Yeah, and again, I don't mind playing, even if you set up a cube that was just totally wacky. That's you know that that's fun. At least then it's like a real card that you can use, but. I have a hard time putting money into like a format like an unset that there is a, like no hope of getting any of that back. Yeah, because you're not gonna rip a unpack and then draw a money card, right? right. And really, people are gonna get tired of it for the most part, you know, relatively quick. Yep, they're not gonna want to keep drafting your uncue. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna put put in. 75 undrafts. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I can't <laughs> even imagine. Like, yeah. Okay, I played handcuffs on you. No, I thought I took that out. Oh, no. I have to keep my hands held together. Uh, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, it is toughness. 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 So what's what's the equivalent now? It's not Smite the Monstrous. Monstrous is power, isn't it? Um, is it the White Exile card? Yeah. The pillar of... Pillar of Light? Pillar of Light, I believe it is, yeah. So, yeah, no, I mean, anyway. it's a good... Yeah. Kind of leans at, two of the three cards now have the modular thing on there. So, the oh, choose one. I love that. That yeah, is I, awesome. I think it's great. I don't agree with the new formatting of it, but I think it's a great thing. I hope we get some at the common level. Yeah. It'd be, it'd Even be if cool. it's way less compl complicated, but I mean <laughs> that wasn't that card is 
about as simple as you can get. I, mean, I also like the white dragon on there. That I couldn't cool. tell who who the dude was supposed to be. Is that supposed to be Sarkin <laughs> or is that supposed to be Yulgan or I don't know. Yeah, I can't. I mean, somebody will post in comments or something, but I can't tell who that's supposed to be. It's just by the dragon. generic dude and generic. Well, not yes. really a generic dragon because the dragon's white. I don't know. If there's too many other dragons that are white. There's the Eternal Dragon, uh, Slumbering Dragon, um, the Yosha, whatever from Kamigawa. Yoshi. Yeah, so I forget yeah. what the name of the white dragon is in Kamigawa. The Tappy Dragon. Yeah. Not the too curtain. many. Yeah, not too many white mana dragons. Hmm. Now I have to go to gather. <laughs> Quick to the gatherer. Thank well, you, wizards, for not screwing gather up. <laughs> so, uh, while people are hating on me for not understanding unsets, like the one uncard that I've ever purchased was the uh, like the man-eating parrot. It's a two. It's a two-two flyer for two, for one and a blue. It's a two-two flyer, but at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to say like. Uh, save a, what is it, save a removal spell for this one, because that phrase also has all of the gotcha words, if anybody has a gotcha card, aka trap cards. Right. Which is cute, but I don't know. I don't get it. There are... I don't see the appeal. I don't, I mean, they're just goofy, and I guess people do enjoy that. Hey, I mean, whatever floats yeah, your goat. If it if it makes you a happy magic player, then then do be it. Happy. Go play um, so all the un you want. Two, I three, will not stand in your way. Four, five, six, six mono white dragons. Six. Hmm. They're Alastor dragon, Al Elder Astro Land dragon. worm. Yeah. Eternal dragon, exalted dragon. I love exalted dragon. Troll dragon. And Yossi the Morning Star. That's it. Yeah. Good old Yossi. Probably the second best on the list. Maybe Eternal Dragon being the best. Eternal Dragon's pretty cool. Is that the morph? No. Um, Eternal Dragon is the 7 casting cost 5-5 five, five flying plane cycling. Ah, cycle. And, yep. and then on your upkeep you can pay 5 to return it to your hand. It's pretty cool. You're t- thinking about a, uh, the angel from That's the one. Odyssey Block. Yeah, there you that go. card is amazing. So. <laughs> Badass card. As uh, Morrow put it in the podcast about Morph or something, he was like, it was the only Morph creature worth playing. So, <laughs> which is pretty much true. So, yeah, I like Fathom Seer, but then it came out yeah. until later. It would have been nice for them to maybe reprint a card on par with Fathoms here in cons. Yeah. Um, it just seems like the only time I see Morphs even getting played is during Limited. Um, like, the pros don't play Morphs in their Instructed decks at the Pro Tours and stuff. You just don't even see it. And there are some pretty push creatures at, on Morph, so... This seems like a weird mechanic to bring back again. Because this is the third time it's been back, so... I would have rather seen cycling. I would have rather seen pretty much anything than <laughs> paying way more for a creature than you typically need to. Yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, well. Yep. All right. I keep reminding everybody, and I keep not hearing anything. F and M. Make standard popper happen. And guess what I'll do? That's right. I will give you airtime. Woohoo! Airtime, yay! So, if you can make it happen, send me videos and pictures, whatever. Even a description. I'll talk about it. Trust me. If it's content I don't have to write myself, I'll do it. <laughs> so, let me support you. I've given you the opportunity. Now you just gotta make this happen. Any country. 
If you're in Brazil, listen to this, do it. Spain, do it. UK, do it. If you're in Sweden and your name's not Dan, do it. So, all right. Let me see if Dan is available and I will try to get him on the horn. Hello. Dan the man. Random. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Uh, a bit tired. Otherwise, okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we have talked about some standard popper. Did you make it to the top eight of the popper league? No, no, no. Two, two. 16th place, I think. Well, better than what I did. (laughs) But anyway, now it is we've come to that point in the show we're going to talk about some classic popper gauntlet. Yep. The popper gauntlet in its uh, fourth month. Wow, four months. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's not over yet. Not by a long shot. So, we played uh, round six. Round six. I, uh, 20 decks entered, 14 left. That's, that's not bad. No, that's, no good. that's not bad at all. Okay, let's, let's look at the first one. Burned out my old magic mentor. Oh, power T. To the face. I remember you were like, oh no, he's on. Is he going to join? He joined. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Uh, he really has my number when we play magic. He wins. He, he's a better magic player than I am, but he wins uh, a lot more than he should as well. <laughs> so once we were at a paper tournament, mm-hmm. and we have this third friend who always loses to both of us. <laughs> yes, we just have his number. So and we ended up first, second, and third, and Power nice. T beat me in the final. <laughs> And I beat uh, the other guy in the semifinal. <laughs> but we knew when uh, we were four people left that uh, I couldn't beat Power T and the third guy couldn't beat either of us. Wow. <laughs> so, and well. we all played the same deck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the exact uh, s- the same 75 cards. Wow. Well, you knew their, <laughs> I must say, you knew each other's deck really well then. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was Burn versus Power T. But Dan remains victorious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I expected Burn to crash and burn long before this. Because <laughs> it's not a very even deck. Yeah. It isn't, but it just... It just keeps winning. Yeah, it's still here. It's insane. Did I lose a duel? No, I didn't lose a duel to him. Mm-mm. No, you still had 19 and a half minutes left. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, that's pretty nuts. So Burn still has lost only one duel. Amazing. In round five. Speaking of crazy decks you never thought would win, (laughs) Rebel Grind versus Oh, There's two of them there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, rebels, yes, the rebellion is going on, and <laughs> they are sticking the it to the man still. <laughs> yeah, the government tried to fight back with the heroes, but the rebellion was too strong. Yep, no matter what the the war marshal or the uh, cr- the crusader could do. Yeah, we we <laughs> took them to the square and guillotined them. <laughs> well, that's what happens to the the bourgeois, right? Yes. So freedom to France. <laughs> All right, another. It's kind of the uh, what you just played over here. You're playing <laughs> yes. this one here, mono red heroic versus burn. I think this is the the single most confusing point about the Pope Gauntlet. For anyone who joins and just casually watches it, they think that okay, now now mono red heroic was eliminated in the last round, but here it is again. <laughs> Because yep. uh, you thought that Rebel Grind kicked out Mono Red Heroic in the <laughs> right. last match. Yeah, because you keep running into the same decks. 
And yes. even crazier is later on when there's a certain mirror match that we'll unfortunately have to talk about. Oh, uh, no, not uh, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. Let's just, we'll save it. Can, can we just skip that? <laughs> we'll talk quickly. <laughs> uh, in Japanese. Right. Uh, All right. I was going to say that Monored Heroic is also still have only lost one duel. That's really That's impressive. Amazing. Yeah. That is really impressive, actually. So It's also tearing up Standard Popper as well. And oh, Standard. So mm-hmm. it's crazy, crazy good. So When you're, when you're in three formats. JPH good. Snake wanted to point out that now we have raised... Burn Delvern Elves. Wow. So yes. that's pretty good. And at least two of the three matches there, Elves and Delver, I mean, that's just insane to race against those particular decks. So really good. Really, yeah. I mean, it's a great build. So Yeah, I remember the Elves player made, made some critical errors. But it's kind of what you get when you're running a, not a dark horse, but just a deck that just doesn't, you know, on the surface it looks like one thing, but then they keep playing these weird cards, and yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, yeah, next, I love Modern uh-huh. Heroic. I think it's a very strong candidate for actually winning the Gauntlet at this point. It's yeah, it's it's really good, and I enjoy watching it more than Goblins. It was also a deck that was revised heavily in round three, uh, right before the end of the <laughs> changes. <laughs> And it looks really good. Yeah. Strong. All right. Oh, man. Mono, black land, destruction versus affinity. Uh Uh-oh, I hear something in the background. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It's Maximilian from the black hole. He came (laughs) in. He came in and destroyed mono, black land, destruction. Remember that movie Black Hole? Like, back in the 70s? 79. Uh, yeah, 79. It was a Disney a, movie. Yeah. But, yeah, and the, this was the evil robot. And there was a good, cute robot that helped the people. Basically, there was like this research station on the event horizon of a black hole. And the, oh guy, run, and the guy running it went insane. And the, yeah, that ca- happens. Yeah, you know. He's a genius. What are you going to do? And this is Maximilian. Oh, the helper robot that helped him kill people. I did not know that. <laughs> so that, <laughs> who is the who is the affinity player here? Uh, this was uh, Ru- Rurubu. Okay, Rurubu well, destroyed. He summoned the power of Maximilian and destroyed the affinity. Monobot. Has a, a knack for just crushing rogue decks. Yep. It's sort of the reverse and, of Stompy. Stompy and is after, after like the last two rounds, I think didn't Mono Black Land Destruction take out Affinity last round? Yes. Yes. I but, mean, it's like uh, was only about it's. It was going to run out at some point. It was just going to stop being able to win <laughs> against Affinity. <laughs> so, yeah. a last round Negator was like, "Wow, you won against Affinity." Yeah. No, but, yeah. Uh, did yeah, good. it was hard to control affinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't hit all the right control at all the right time, nothing you can do. Yeah, and I think you you really need the the four gray merchants. Oh, without a doubt, you need yeah. some. You need to be able to gain that life. Yes, or otherwise you just get flinged or four forward to death. Yep. All right. Let's look at the next one. I will miss Mono Black Land Destruction. It was my favorite deck to this Me point. Me too. It was awesome. I th- so I'm, still, I'm still going to buy favorite it. Deck. <laughs> and that's All probably right. Mono Red Heroic at this point. <laughs> or Exhume Control. Exhume Control. Here's what happened, folks. Dan was playing Exhume Control. Delver flew in. But what happened next? That's right. Had some Exhumed Crusher. And Delver was like, oh no, gotta go. <laughs> and that's right. The Crusher ran Delver off and Dan won. <laughs> what a beautiful tale. <laughs> I knew you would like it. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the thing I like most about this match is that uh, David Schaffer actually commented that I had improved <laughs> in playing the deck. Wow. So I must be learning something during hey. all these proper matches. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> I think we're past the 300 mark now, but I'm not really sure. For Exum Control? For uh, all the, the, oh, po the all number of proper matches in oh, the gauntlet. Okay. Okay, I gotcha. I was like, you you have really been playing a lot off-screen if you've reached <laughs> 300. No, I, I, I never play off-screen. Ah. Okay, what's this one? Mono, oh, mono blue control versus the same Rurubu. Maximilian came back. <laughs> yeah, damn Maximilian. <laughs> He came back this, and destroyed yeah, you. This, this match was, yeah, Fling did a lot of work. Oh yeah, yeah. In this particular match, so. he would, he would fling any four four at you that <laughs> just to you know just to get you down a little you know. He he was generous with the fling. Yes, and it worked. It did. Well, he, it, he's, he slips the 4 fours under the counterspell cloud. And um, then things become rough. <laughs> yeah. And mirror oh. forces are hard to repeal. Because, they, yeah, they can just cast them right back for nothing. Yep. And it costs eight mana to repeal them. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next one. Bugs and Pigs versus Stompy. Again, another deck that's like, how? How does it win? But it does this, win. This deck is really growing on me. Uh, the first thing is that it, it has really proved that that stupid pig for three mana <laughs> actually works. The gain for life pig? <laughs> yeah, it's like Stompy doesn't really like that. So you have to put a, a growth spell to get past the pig, and yeah. then I just sacrifice the pig and gain four, and I get back Grim Harvest. <laughs> we should just nickname him Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. So, so I, I think this deck has uh, really grown on me. It's complicated to play it, but uh, once, once you get the Grim Harvest thing going, it really benefits from it. It's impressive. Yeah, and it's a blue deck that doesn't really have any other card draw than Muldrifter. But, uh, wow. It's, yeah, it's great. And uh, it won, despite You, you quickly get your uh, basics out of the deck, so you just everything you draw is value. Mm -hmm. And that might be key why this, why this engine works. It's because you're pulling so much out. All the time, and you do yeah, it early actually. enough. Yeah, when I started playing, when I played the, the double elimination rounds at the start, I, I was just oh another casual rogue brew that will be eliminated quickly. But uh, this deck has really grown on me a lot. I think it shows something that in like a decent mid range deck, tribalders are actually really strong in the format. They block, they filter. Even though filtering, you know, it doesn't really do anything. They fix your mana. So, no, it, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with the deck. Um, cause I the, filtering the, does, the filtering does a lot when it's repeatable. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that, that, that's more important than you think when, when you can do it with a Grim Harvest. Yeah, the Grim Harvest in it is amazing. I mean, that's an engine card. We've known that for a while because of the... Um, 300 billion matches of trinket are that are up on the channel. Um, 320 billion, actually. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry, it's I forgot up. the other 20 million. Uh, so, but yeah, no, it's a great, it's a really good deck. Lots of interaction, life game built in. No, it's been really fun to watch so far. So, and check out how Stompy. <laughs> Stompy is designed explicitly to build to beat Rogue Bruce. I mean, it's still one, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, I think it's the other way around. I think Stompy's big weakness is Rogue Bruce. Really? Stompy yeah. hates these mid-range decks. Uh, Stompy is built to crush the Tier 1 decks. 
And that's what Stumpy does. It, it wins against Delver, it wins against the control decks, but it has a problem with decks like Azorius Kitty, Boros Kitty, Bugs and Pigs, anything mid range is really bad for Stompy and any combo deck as well. <laughs> so there's a long history of Stompy videos uh, or playing against Stompy on the channel where, where Stompy loses to strange things. That's because why Stompy is so predictable as well. Stompy <laughs> has no way of interacting with combos or just huge creatures. Right, I mean, you can't really put anything like that in even the sideboard either. You have to kind of stay focused on the all aggro, so... Yep. Yep. Well, there you so go. I, I wasn't surprised that Bugs and Pigs could beat Stompy, but I, I wonder what it would run into. Uh, it did win against Teaching somehow in the round, but I think the control decks will be its problem. And uh, like Familiars, how do you beat that? How does oh, anything with this? Beat yeah, that? I don't know. Yeah, I have I have no advice. <laughs> <laughs> Play Delver. Play Delver. Play Del- right. Well, we'll see in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Boros Kitty versus <gasps> Mono Black Control. Boros Kitty wins. That looks like an awful lot of goblins right there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, you were you were destined to win this one. I mean, <laughs> I, I I felt I felt so strong for you in this in this last um, game of this match. It seemed like you know you 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 made all the right moves and yeah. I mean, look look at that. You're you're at twenty one life. <laughs> it's just Sam, ridiculous. Sam, how do you feel about this matchup? I like it. Um, I mean. You should have a better, you know, mid to late game. Um, yeah. And I don't think he was necessarily playing the best mono black control deck. I mean, he's playing Ravenous Rats. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he was playing Chittering Rats or not, but I mean, you just have too many. You have so many angles of attack. Um, and ch- they really don't, so. Are Chittering Rats expensive or something? Uh, I don't think so. Like, like, like oh. uh, Ravenous Rats is the worst two for one in Pauper, I feel. Because one half of the two for one is a useless one one. <laughs> yeah, that's but a good thing. If about you the have Chittering the. Rats. If you have a Kiba Gang Shinobi, you can make a case for them, but otherwise, don't play them. I mean, yeah, the Kiba Gang, though, I mean, that's better with Chittering. I mean, it's even. The uh, Liliana Specters, you have to kind of argue that that's even just way better than the Chittering Rats. Yes, so. but when you have four Specters and four Chittering Rats, maybe you can play some Ravenous Rats. If you <laughs> yeah. Have four. Oh, no. You can just go Okay, nuts. just don't play them. Okay. All <laughs> right. Well, and here you are playing Affinity. But this yep. time... You won. <laughs> yes. You won with uh, Affinity against Red Deck Wins. Yeah, looks like a quit in the last duel here as well. Or did I fling? No, I thought... No, you you beat him. He was a negative Yeah, one. you went all in on your ATOG. Yeah. Oh, you were nice. like, all it takes... You know, he, you were trying to figure out what he could have for one red that would stop this, and that yeah. would be nothing. Yeah, it's yes. not think. Yeah. There's one. So, there's um, one split card. I'm trying to remember that you could. I think there's a split card that you could have, and one of it is, but that's uncommon, so it won't even affect this match. But I was just trying to think of what one red card. Yeah. Could he? Have? Hmm. Anyway. Well, uh, yeah, this was uh, easy. <laughs> Not bad. Affinity lost very early in the last season of the Popper Gauntlet, but uh, I feel it's a strong candidate as well here. I think just having the Perilous Research now, and we didn't have it in the first Gauntlet, is yeah. just so much... I mean, it just gives the deck so much more 
reach that it's insane. So didn't the didn't last year's have that um af- that affinity flyer? No the regard. No. Well, hmm. uh, I, I always hate that up guy. <laughs> yeah. Somber Hubbard. Yeah, yeah, that one. I mean, no, <laughs> no, no. No, is it just a pl- it's just a flip Dolver, right? And yeah, it costs pre-tune. like a million mana. Well, or one blue. Or one blue. So. But not on turn one when it matters. So. <laughs> no. All right. uh, I feel that uh, Perilous Research gives you the reach you need against the control decks. You can actually outdraw the control decks, and that's uh, pretty strange. It is yeah, crazy. And it, I mean, it also negates a lot of removal. I mean, it yep. just does. Like, you ran into... Oh, yeah, the Tendrils it, guy. Yeah, the guy in the last round where he was just perilous researching in response to every removal spell you played. Um, like, he did it, like, what, six times through the course of the, all the games you played against him. So it was pretty, pretty insane and pretty good, so... Yeah, that is yeah I, I wonder why Affinity isn't more popular than... It. Uh, than it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it beats itself a lot of time with its own mana base. But it seems to do that much less, actually, with uh, with Perilous Research. Yeah, no, it seems like it's getting more consistent. So, uh, but no, it's not. I mean, it's not a monocolored super aggro deck, and maybe that's why. Oh, it, so. it is the second deck in the format right now. Oh, really? It's more popular than Delver right now. Oh my god. Wait, what's one then? Familiars. Seriously? Yeah, I think... Oh. Uh, wow. I think the format is borderline broken right now. I talked to Deluxecoif uh, yesterday and uh, he complained a lot about Familiars. Ten. Thirteen percent of the meta. Yep. Ah. That's just gross. And Affinity's 12, Delver is 11. It's not like thing, you know, it's not like the the counts are all that different. It went from, it's 10 for Familiar, 9 for Affinity, and 8 for Delver. So, then yeah. Mono Black is 6. So, it's not like it's super different. Um, but, wow, I can't believe Familiar's is in, on the top position right now. So... And I think the fact that Familiars is in the top position might uh, be the reason that Affinity is in number two, because Affinity can definitely be fast enough to overrun Familiars. Oh, yeah. It's one of the few decks that can. And it's an old discussion, but I think Affinity has a a positive Delver matchup as well. Because uh, Delver has a hard time with the resolved 4-4. Yeah, not much yeah, you can do Delver about it. Yeah, has to get the <laughs> really super aggro draw out of the gates to beat Affinity. Yeah. Yeah, and you have and to spell stuff those happen. Carapace Forgers. Yeah, you have to be ready to get rid of the cheap 4-4s four because you can't necessarily get rid of the free ones. Exactly. There you go. All right, what's next? Goblins versus Trinket Control. Again. Dan wins this one too. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup because uh, this is one of the matchups with Trinket that uh, me and Power Key uh, has the most difference in. <laughs> so I, I lose the Goblins like 75% and he wins against Goblins 70%. Wow. That's a big disparity. So <laughs> it's a very, very complicated matchup actually. Yeah, it's control versus control. And I think it helped me that uh, I played Trinket so much against uh, against Goblins. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. You know, so I, you I know was thinking, why next? do I always lose against Goblins Trinket? Oh, it's because of this. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's see. Uh, a uh, side note about oh, Goblins, mm-hmm. then. I'm uh, working on trying to say Bushwhacker. Whacker, yes. <laughs> Whacker. Excellent. Yeah. And not, um, not something else. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> I remember your your request. A lot of people responded. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
And what the hell is going on here? This is... Oh, there's the Crusher. Yep. Here's Green Grifters versus Mono Mono Bluetron. Here's the Crusher. But what happened? Rawr. A wolf came. <laughs> yeah, that's came. what happened. <laughs> the wolves came and the beasts came. And they destroyed the Mono Bluetron. Yep. Uh, Green Grifters has had a lot of luck and quit just a second. But this one was really impressive. This was an honest crushing of Mono Bluetron. Yeah, you did it. He was stumbling there at the end, but he just kept coming. It was, it was good. And he was like, I'm going to block with this Seagate Oracle, but uh, oh no, <laughs> nope. said Pitskulk. <laughs> Pitskulk? Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> These huge Pitskulks, they, they are really dangerous to some decks. Oh yeah, Does it, you know, once you get past a certain point, not much has that kind of power. Yeah, just the get him to five and uh, just one hunger and uh, some decks just die. Mm-hmm. Can't do anything about it. Unblockable. Yep. All right. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we come to a sad part of our show. Tortured Toolbox versus Winter Zoo. I'm afraid when the winter overcame the Tortured Toolbox. Ow. And the snow began to fall on the winter Tortured Toolbox. Coming. Yeah, winter is coming. And it, it came for Tortured Toolbox. It sure did. So, yeah. Not not a matchup you see very often. Not a lot of people are really running the Zoo deck out there right now. So, um, but yeah, the mid rangey grindy deck versus the super aggro deck, and the super aggro deck did its thing. So, I felt that uh, this should have been more even, but those Nakals sure did the number. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh. I yeah, had you, first you, turn uh, Tortured Existence every game, I think. Um, don't think you did on game two. Okay. But I, I felt that there, there was no time. Yeah, you're right. The, the, your opponent just kept coming. And it didn't matter. <laughs> and this makes me sad as well. This was a really fun deck to play. Thank you for the list, Sam. Hey, no problem. It was, it was, I'm glad it made it so far. Um, I'm glad that it produced a very entertaining match last round against Mono Black Control. So, mm. no, it's great. It's a good build. Um, and again, Tortured Existence is always going to be kind of like that fringe uh, deck out there. I mean, right now it's in the top 10, but it's the John to build. So, hmm. oh. no, I, I like it. So, yeah, cool. All right, All right. let's see what's next. Azorius Kitty versus Cruise. Is it Cruise Fiend? Ah, yeah. yeah, so much value. Yeah, he had you. You beat him when he had two seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like I'm gonna beat him. I'm not gonna let him time out. So that nope. was pretty fun. Um, the deck, the Is it deck, is currently being referred to as Is it Blitz. Is it okay. Blitz? Blitz is yeah. the nickname for the Delver Fiend deck that's crammed together with the Is It Control with the Treasure Cruises. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why they call it Is It Blitz, but I've seen it like three different places called Is It Blitz. Hmm. Uh, so, All but right. yeah, no. I, I mean, doesn't this feel like you really weaken Delver Fiend by cramming Mull Drifters and and cruises and chain lightnings and stuff into it. I but mean... You have given up the ability to be unblockable, right? And you have given up the ability to, to protect... Yeah. The and you instead really you just up, draw more cards. Right. You really just give up a bunch of what makes Dollar Fiend the deck that can just win by doing that. So it's just really strange. But... And it, it seems you don't gain a whole lot... No, you so, gain more card draw, but you're playing that instead of winning. And you give yeah. up the Delvers, right, as well. Yeah, no Delvers. I don't think he was running any. Yeah, you, you're drawing into more draw cards. 
And what's the point? <laughs> um, two things I want to point out. Number one, it is very sad that we don't have the second Asurius Kitty deck in the in the top fourteen. <laughs> yes, uh, I was thinking how interesting it would be if both of them were still in. Um, yeah. I will say that Pyrotes build is amazing. Um, the familiars uh, do a whole lot. It feels like playing familiars at times. Yeah, no, just the cost reduction makes everything else so much easier to cast. Almost all of your more powerful sided cards in the deck are the blue cards. So yes. no, it it feels like cheating. It really does. Watching you <laughs> play it, you're like, I'm like, he's cheating. He's cheating. He's playing <laughs> extra lands off of explorers and stuff. Um, and then the second thing was he committed honorable seppukupa by chain lightning oh, himself, chain lightning and himself. yeah that's true yeah <laughs> so that was dan was like uh why is he doing that and i'm like he's falling on his sword come on <laughs> let him do it so that was pretty fun yeah you, you were gonna win anyway yeah no doubt i, I think the big strength <laughs> of this build with the familiars is that it has uh, as opposed to the other build, or as opposed to Familiars itself, it has the ability to defend itself much quicker. Right. So it will survive the really fast decks. That's true. Unfortunately, though, this deck did not survive. Ah. Bant that's Residence. a shame. Yeah. Um, you just kind of felt like both of the Presence decks... You know, presence is fun. It is a three card combo a lot of the time, and uh, it's just not that reliable. That's why it's not around more. And I mean, Delver Fiend, uh, that would be just a tough matchup all the way around. So, yeah, I love the focus of this deck. The isn't this the classic thing when two combo decks run into each other? The faster combo deck wins. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But no, I no, love the focus it. on the combo. <clears throat> I think this is the strongest uh, presence of Gone build I've seen. It, it was it's definitely way focused. stronger than the... Because the other one was the Celestia, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, with tokens and like accidentally falling into presence of Gone. <laughs> right. Yeah, so way, I think it's, way better. There's a new version of this deck, uh, the brewer told me. So he's still working on this, and mm. it's uh, a bit faster, I think. Wow, okay. But, uh, of course, Delver Fiend must be a nightmare matchup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're not doing any kind of business till at least turn four, when Delver Fiend can already be killing you. Yes. <laughs> so, oh well, there you go. What's next? Green one versus Hexproof. Uh, this should be a very hard match. This is traditionally the Stompy killer. <clears throat> yeah. The Stompy doesn't have a chance against Hexproof. But, but you... it turns out the green one does. Yeah, once you, you know, suited up your Solana Wet Ledgewalker. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you were good to go. <laughs> the Luxico has built green one uh, based on all his experience with Stompy and Hexproof. And he played... Hundreds of matches with both decks. So this mm -hmm. is like uh, the merch, <laughs> the, <laughs> the hybrid, the, the bastard son of Hexproof and Stompy. Right. Right, and Zolotnikov <laughs> actually <laughs> built the Hexproof that most people are running now, which is the mono green, all forest land based version of Hexproof. Um, so that's really interesting too, because you're playing. You're playing his brainchild against his brainchild, basically. <laughs> so, very, very yes. interesting matchup. I thought it was like you out hexproofed hexproof, basically, in this match. And that was beautiful to see because I hate the hexproof mechanic. I'm just so, <laughs> oh, it's just, it doesn't seem fair, especially in, com uh, in Popper. So, that was a great match. That was um, a lot of fun to watch. I thought um, he played the Infect. Aura, the Infect Enchantment. Right. On the, I can't remember what it's called now, and I thought that was interesting tech, um, but I don't know. He never got to hit you with it, right? So. Right. It's not like Hexproof has a problem doing 20 points of damage, so no. I don't see use of the Infect thing. I mean, I guess if you're... 
No, I'm trying to think of a reason why you'd want to do that. I just can't come up with one. It just seems uh, weird. If you run into, like, elves or something, maybe. Yeah, with wall wishers. But if, if elves has 100 lives, you don't have a problem doing 100 damage either <laughs> with experts. <laughs> right. Yeah, because elves mean, can't stop you. Yeah, and no. you're gaining a bunch of life, typically off of, like, armadillo cloaks with ancestral mats and stuff, yeah. so... Your, your damage scales so fast with Hexproof. But this way of beating Hexproof is interesting to just be even faster. <laughs> <laughs> you did, and you no, got I've been there. Impressed. I've been impressed with the green one every match, every round so far. Like, I like Stompy. I think green one is, you know, tweaked just a little bit to be just a little bit faster. So, very cool. Very I think they match. play extremely differently, actually. Mm-hmm. The green no, one yeah, is a no, bit like do. Mono Red Heroic. Right. It's ultra-aggressive, whereas Stompy can easily fall back into like a semi controlish position mm-hmm. against certain aggro decks. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think next time yeah. there is a proper gauntlet, whenever yes. that will happen. <laughs> uh, we have to pressure Deluxicoif to... Uh, to uh, Give us more than two decks. Right. He should. He has he, many he churn, interesting he, brews. Right. He churns them out left and right. Yeah. At least five Deluxe Court brews next time. <laughs> the top five. It'll be a campaign. Yes. All right. Uh, brings us to one of the decks chosen by Ash. Unfortunately, Illusory Tricks got burned out. Oh. Shh. That, okay, this was so an interesting burn build. We we have to say that in in the in the final moments of the match that that had to have been the best treasure cruise ever cast. <laughs> I mean, he cast it. He had to have drawn the lightning bolt into the 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 fire blast off of the cruise. It was insane insane like what are the odds of that happening in a typical game of magic probably, yeah. probably pretty low so because uh, you, you were you were winning on the crackback yeah oh, I have a kill yep I mean he just drew the perfect few cards he needed to go <laughs> ahead and just take you to dead so I and Baba pointed out a couple things and I saw maybe you know, holding up counter magic every now and again would have been maybe a little bit better in the first game, but I don't, I don't think you could have done really anything overall in that matchup. So, but the problem uh, with holding up expensive counter magic like counter spell is that he is drawing more burn spells, right? So you have to put a clock on him. Yeah, you can't race holding up, and I mean, once you're at like six life anyway. Mm-hmm. Anything can kill you. I mean, you're just like basically dead if you can't kill them first. So, um, but yeah, no, it. Ah, poor tricks. I, I blame tricks a bit for this loss because uh, the things you give up when you play tricks instead of Delver is, for example, this matchup. The spell stuff <laughs> strike is so strong against burn. Uh, Winning against Burn is laughingly easy with the regular Delver build. And it's not as easy with Tricks. Right. Because you don't have you don't have that tempo and counter in one thing. The spell spell stat the sprite and the ninjas, they are really important against Burn. That's true. Alright, let's talk about Love Train versus the Walls R Us, the mirror match. That yeah, um, what? Uh, how? What are the odds? I don't know. I mean, and not they just have that, to be but a, against a slightly different Love Train build. Yeah, and so I did. Who, who was the player? Tao. Yeah, I think in some of the very early videos on the YouTube channel, like in. March of 2013, I played against Tao, and he was doing uh, Freed from the Real combo. So that was the original Freed from the Real build, long before wow. uh, long before Love Train. Huh. 
And I think I played the build too in some videos. But yeah. he had the. Um, he had just come back and he rebuilt the deck. And he hadn't seen Love Train. Wow. That's uh, actually pretty cool, um, him being like a, one of the originators of the deck. Um, so his baby's all grown up now. That's def- for definite. So Yeah, he, he yeah. had this amazing uh, spreadsheet with uh, like 19 different iterations of the deck tracking every card change <laughs> he had made. Wow. Wow. So he was yeah, quite no- interested in Freed from the Real back then. I think this was one of his first matches with the deck now that he came back. Crazy. It was a good matchup. I knew, like, he was like, yeah, I'm messing around with this deck. And you're like, you take, you wrote him back. Yeah, it's my deck's kind of rogy. <laughs> and then he played green, he played blue, he played a wall. And I was like, oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. Why is this going to happen? Oh, come on, Love Train. So... But no, I mean, if Love Train is going to lose, it may as well lose to Love Train. Yeah, this proves that there can be too much love in the world. <laughs> Way too much love. Way too much. <laughs> and that eliminates the last of the vote back decks. Uh... They didn't last for very long <laughs> um, this time around. Um, it was a little sad. Yeah. So, yeah, I think their track record was two wins and three losses <laughs> after the yeah. World Bank. So, uh, and Tur- Turbo Fog was the only one that didn't pick up at least one win. Right. Yeah. Because it just got demolished right after he came back. <laughs> so. Oh, well. Okay, well, here's Delver Fiend versus Rakdos Metalcraft. Weird build. Versus- Versus Ratko, Ratko's strange card choices? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, every 100 pauper matches or so, maybe every 200 pauper matches or so, somebody has looked at Blightning and figured that, oh, <laughs> Blightning must be good. Because Blightning was really good in standard at one point. Right, but it's just not there for Pauper for some reason. I can't really explain it. It's just one too. It's just a step too slow. It really yeah. is. It, it's yeah. too weak. And it's it's strange that it is. Yeah, I mean that's got to be it. I mean the reason it was playable in standard was Bloodbraid Elf, right? I wasn't. I didn't play Magic when those two cards were in standard at the same time. But I mean, wasn't it mostly strong because you could just get it for free off of the off of the Bloodbraid Elf coming into play. Yeah, that was sweet. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... That felt unfair, I'll tell you. Did, wouldn't you just rather not ever cast Blightning? Uh, it felt that it was uh, it was pretty good to cast against other John decks. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 blight, uh, I Blightning your Bloodbraid Elf. <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, you got I half mean, of that. <laughs> it would... This is, yeah, this is kind of Delverfiend doing its thing, and then, I don't know. I watched the match. I watched his deck maybe a little closer than, than the Delverfiend deck, kind of trying to figure out what his game plan was. And at the end, I was like, yeah, uh, not sure what it was. So, but Delverfiend did its job, won its match. There you go. Delverfiend, I like Affinity, just crushes Rogue Groups. Or anything oh, yeah. that this stumbles yes. in any way, <laughs> shape, form, or fashion, Delrafine just smashes exactly. it. Exactly. So. You've you've got a couple of chances to stop it, and if you're not able to, forget it. And credit to Farth as well for this build. I think it's really, really strong. It is a great build. Mm-hmm. Probably the most solid Delrafine build, just in performance and oh yeah, the fact it's great. <laughs> like no assault stroves, no nope. instant, no sorcery speed, goofing around. Everything's instant. Everything is castable whenever you need to cast it. Um, no, it's great. It's a great build. So yeah, Farf thumbs up. So Farf makes great decks. He definitely does. All right, here, here we come to 
like Dan talked about earlier, Stompy, what what can it do? It can beat Delver? That's right. This must be, this must be the classic pauper matchup. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, what I love the most is right here. Look what he has standing in your way. And all it took was a Rancor on a, basically an, an, a naked pit skulk. He cast him as a 1-1 one, one for 1 and Rancor. He can't do anything about it. Nice. That's, that's so awesome. <laughs> uh, so, this I, matchup I, is very even, but uh, I think Scattershot Archer gives Stompy the edge. But I also remember that there were very few Scattershot Archers in this match. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you I kept mean, saying, like, where are you, Scattershot Archers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you look at that board and you go, oh, oh, come on, the Delbert guy is just going to win. And that was just a like the perfect time to rip the Rancor. You had, because he, he had to at least leave the Golems back, so you had some more turns to draw into an answer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, very, yeah, good, good match. Stompy, very, very fun. So, and anytime Delbert doesn't win, um, an angel gets its wings. So, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, what you wings. need to do to win the to win the Pauper Gauntlet, you definitely need a strong Delver matchup. But the number of Delver decks in the practice room is, as somebody pointed out, uh, quite low. People are done practicing with Delver or something. I, hmm. I I feel that I run into very few Delver builds. I think a lot of the times you've been running into Delver too, it's people who have net decked it and are starting it out. Yeah. So you've had some pretty uneven matches of, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then you're like, I know what I do. I beat you because you don't know the deck. So. Yep. Okay. Rawr. Stomping. Rawr. There he is. That's Green right. Giant. Stompy won with Rancor. And I would like to commemorate that with this sort of inappropriate picture. It seems it's, weird. It's very <laughs> weird. <laughs> I think it's inappropriate because he has lightning come out of, coming out of his hands? Or yes. that he's green? Yes, lightning. That's what's coming <laughs> out of his hands. That's lightning. Maro's totem animal right there. <laughs> like. This is what I am when I close my eyes. I'm this guy. Brings us to... Not yet. That brings us to Familiars versus Delver, the one you posted the last today. What's awesome about that is it's a winner. Yeah, and this was a bit sad, but I... As all of these decks that were entered into the gauntlet before people submitted decks... Uh, they are without cyborg plans and uh, have no real brewer. So I've asked for people to step up and provide cyborg plans and instructions. And there was this guy, uh, Ricardo Morigi, who uh, helped me. So he has written a play guide for familiars called the coffee model. <laughs> because I like coffee. <laughs> so And it's really helpful. He's also provided a full cyborg plan. So this Sunday on the 21st, uh, I published the coffee model on MTGO Library. So there will be an article detailing how to play familiars. That's pretty cool. And, uh, the one thing he said was that uh, <clears throat> you will probably lose to Delver. That's the hardest matchup for the deck. Yeah. But then I ran into Delver and I was like, ah, oh, no, I yeah. have to try this new model and oh, so much to think about. And, uh, but then the Delver player just quit during sideboarding. <laughs> yeah, and we, I mean, we talked about it a little bit right before we started recording, and you just feel maybe if he had actually came back from sideboarding, then maybe he had some anti Delver attack, and maybe his games two and three would have been really strong against you. But I mean, you went off there. Um, you were about to snap his Delver back and then untap, and then you would have been able to, to finish that particular game out. So he was probably right to scoop right then. But, I mean, you pointed out in the video, this is really the matchup as a Delver player you really kind of want to test. So right. why did you scoop? So 
Exactly. I mean, if they if you want to get anywhere in your magic craft, you got to learn how to play against this deck because it's out there. Yes, and it's, a good Delver play definitely has a huge edge in this matchup. Yeah, it, yeah. It needs to. You need. Yeah, you need to be able to beat it. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. All right. Well, that uh, looks. Uh huh. I might have to take back what I said about Delver. This means that I run into Delver in three out of twenty matches. Oh, it's still out there in this round. How many affinities? I know Two, at least three. Three? Yeah. Yeah, because we saw the robot three times. Oh, I saw the robot twice, but you beat twice. the robot oh, once. Yeah. You did beat the robot once. Who um, beat the robot? That was uh. uh I played affinity. I won, but I don't think I, I defeated you, Affinity. I thought you beat it with one. Let's look. Yeah, let's look. We have Muck versus Affinity. That lost. Yep, that lost. Green Grifters versus what's Mono Blue Tron? Where's Affinity? Mono Black lost to Affinity. I think well, we saw the robot the third time when I played Affinity. Ah, uh, that's oh, right. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's, it's when you, you did. did not you, beat you, Affinity this round. See, you keep playing decks, and, we, and even we're getting confused, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ha- also have a lot of flashback to last round where you played the one gentleman playing like Affinity. 20 times. Yeah, like over yeah. and over again. And, yeah, so we thought the robot would be fun because... The robot has taken a lot of decks out in the last couple of rounds, so... Yes. Yeah. Mean robots. Damn robots. Uh, I have an announcement. Uh 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 Uh-huh. There are 14 decks left. 14 decks. I looked at last year. Yeah. And last year we had 11 decks left in one of the late rounds. And then one deck got eliminated because it was banned... Oh, wow. Yeah, Fisher. It's one post, uh, yeah. the same mixed post. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then we had the, the top 10 decks. But now I think that, well, maybe we won't end up with exactly 10 decks. So it's very likely that uh, I have another result than 10 for next uh, round. Yeah. So if that happens, if there is... Uh, after next round or after the round after that, there is less than 10 decks left. Mm-hmm. There, we need to determine which decks are the top 10 because the top 10 decks auto qualify for the next uh, season. Yeah. <clears throat> so there will be a top 10 playoff between the losers in the last round. Before oh, we okay. To, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if there are eight decks left in a round, all the decks that lost in the previous round will play off for the last two spots in the right. top eight. The top ten. I gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. So one round will be the top ten playoff. Unless it's like two decks. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Sounds good. So we'll see what happens in uh, the next round. <laughs> Well, I'm. I have to ask you. Yes, I have to ask you. Who, which deck do you think will win? Oh my God! Why are you doing this? You have to answer. Son of a. I'm picking familiars. Oh my God! You just doomed the deck that I was gonna pick to losing the next time Dan plays it. (sighs) (laughs) But 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 he's got that new coffee model and everything. I I know the coffee model seems strong very strong um, so that's my pick I think Familiars is going to win out I, I think mean, it's definitely the favorite too I mean I think it's so strong it's so well positioned it's not interactive I mean it's just the deck to beat right now I think maybe in the format um, definitely in the gauntlet um, I really would prefer it to be something like it either of the kitty decks um, but it just feels so, like Familiars is so strong. So It is definitely the question if... Th- there are three dangers as I see them. Um, the Clock, yeah. Delver, mm-hmm. and my inexperience with the deck. <laughs> but you are getting a lot of help, though. Yes, and I'm advice. learning a lot. I think I'm a better Familiar player than when I started the Gauntlet. But I think so. 
I think your more recent matches with it have shown that you've gotten a lot better than the first two in the first two rounds. Of course, there is a secret danger that in January, Wizards will actually ban something and get rid of, like, Cloud of Fairies. Yeah, that would be a bummer for familiars. It would. And for and for Dolver. Uh, maybe we should discuss what happens then if there is a ban. Uh, if there is a brewer, and Familiars has no brewer, uh, mm-hmm. the brewer is allowed to change the deck if he feels that the deck can be salvaged. Right. But if there is no brewer, or if the... What happened to Simic Storm Post in last season was that the brewer felt that the deck couldn't be salvaged. So then the deck is just eliminated by the banning. And I mean, Storm Post died that day. It just <laughs> died. It lost all of its cards, basically all the engine cards. Could yeah. familiars live without Cloud of Fairies? You gotta be able. The only other th- card like it would be Snap. And they yeah, you have to. And that's in the <laughs> in the coffee model. But uh, winning with uh, Snap is a lot harder. Yeah. No yeah. kidding. I mean, a lot of the times, a lot of the strength comes from the deck is. Snapping the Cloud of Fairies, untapping, flickering, untapping, and all of that stuff. So I don't think Snap alone is enough to keep the deck alive. Um, uh, so so I, I also feel that the banning is unlikely at this point, but uh, I don't think know. Wizards. I don't think Wizards is ever going to ban another another thing in Popper. I think those last bannings we got are the last bannings we're ever going to get. So. <laughs> and that's just disappointing, but I mean, their their energy is spent elsewhere. So there are voices raised for the banning, but uh, I think they're too few, and it's too soon. I mean, and the thing, like a lot of people are talking about treasure crews and banning crews, and how crews is ruining the format. And I'm like, no, Cloud of Fairies. Yeah, Cla- it's the Come familiar on, builds even playing crews. Huh? No, they're yeah. not, right? They're what, not playing what, Cruise. What's playing Cruise? What decks are actually playing Cruise? Is it? Uh, Delver? Uh, Delver, but I mean... Uh, Does Delver many? need it, though? Seriously? Yeah. Why would Delver need Cruise? Delver's built for speed. It's built to run off of cantrips. I mean, how many casting cost spells are you really jamming into your Delver deck? And... Is it is really powerful or burn is really powerful using cruise because you get a lot of power per card, you know, three for one, three damage for one mana. So in that situation, yeah, but like this evil eight casting card cast eight casting cost common. And it's just not really all over the format like some other cards. So, I think I think if any card needs to be banned, it's probably Cloud of Fairies, um, and I I don't know. Maybe there's something in there like Ghostly Flicker might become the abused recursion engine there um, because it's definitely a card that's shown in the past in Standard Popper. It's super easy to abuse. So let me give you the top ten most played cards in Popper. Okay. Okay. Number one, any guesses? Delver. Preordain. Preordain. There is a banning candidate. (laughs) It's already banned in modern. Uh, Number two, Hydroblast. Hydroblast? Yes. It fits into so many sideboards. It's in 47% of winning poor predicts. Wow. Number three, Pyroblast. Huh. Yep. Uh, number four, and the first creature, Cloud of Fairies. There you go. Says it uh, all. Played more often than Delver. So. Yes, in uh, 29% of winning decks. That's Delver and Familiars. <laughs> uh, number five, Muldrifter. Awesome. Happy Dragon. Uh, yeah, I think Muldrifter really is uh, at home in Pauper. You never see anyone play it in any other format except Limited. But in Pauper, I, it does a lot of things. 
It was really good in Silver Black when that was still a format. Yeah, so. that's true. Yep. Number six, Snap. And that's Snap, probably yeah. the Cloud of Fairies decks. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Ponder. Number eight, Chromatic Star. Wow. Yeah, Tron, Affinity, etc. Oh, yeah, Chromatic Star is yep. a good one. Number nine, Electricery. Another ace <laughs> out of the sideboard. And at number 10, and falling, I believe, and will soon be gone from this list, Treasure Cruise. Yep. Yeah, I don't... I, I know it was recently stated that it's, uh, you know, affecting the format, but I just... In a format that didn't really ask for it, I just don't think it's going to have all that much of a lasting effect. I mean, I guess it might. I, I'm not... A soothsayer. I can't tell you what is going to happen in the future, but it just doesn't seem. That's uh, seven blue cards and two red <laughs> cards that interact well with blue cards. Right. It is. It is an eternal format, so of course it's going to pull towards blue, because blue has the commons that are rare level powerful. Okay, so that's going to happen. <laughs> that's just the way of the world. But um, in a vacuum. You put Preordain next to Treasure Cruise. You're going to play Preordain a bunch more. Because it's just, it's a more effective spell. And that's why it's number one and Treasure Cruise is going to fall off the top ten. So, Yeah, I think if you ban Preordain, almost nothing happens because people just play Serum Visions instead. Yeah. Oh. Serum Visions, like $5 a card. $5 now. For, <laughs> um, so people are like, "Oh, Modern Masters 2015 better have Serum Visions in it." I'm and pretty sure it will have that. I would. I, is, so I have so and, all my Serum Visions and Spell it's Pierce. It's actually the only proper card I don't have. I'm telling you, it's going to have Spell Pierce. And um, I want a Blackboard or Slide of Hand. I mean, I just want a Blackboard or Slide of Hand. So all the whiteboard art is horrible on that card. Oh, it's just so yeah. gross. You don't like so. that goofy dude going, meh, meh, no. hand. There's only two <laughs> versions of it on MTGO, and the art on both of them are just, it's just horrible. Horrible. And I know in the paper, in paper realm, there's at least a couple blackboard versions that are bad art, but they're blackboarded. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, I would like to see both of those get reprinted, but. Who knows? I'm sure one of them will. So That's true. Alright, guys. Well, it's getting late. Yep. That brings us to the end of the show. Please visit MagicGatheringStrat.com YouTube is MagicGatheringStrat. How surprising. Twitter, at MagicGathStrat. For me, I am at Cerulean. Says hi. Hello. And for Sam, it is SPO7677. Facebook slash Magic Gathering Strat. Please like and subscribe. Makes us feel better about ourselves. Helps us out a little bit. And with that being said, I am Brennan. I am Brennan. No, I'm Sam. Oh, yeah. They're not. not I am your favorite Swede. All right. You are my favorite Swede. Well, yeah, screw you, cutie pie. Yes. Yeah, what does he <laughs> oh, what does wow. he know about YouTube? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this has been the standard Popper Show. Standard Popper Show. Better than the intro.